Hello, everyone. Cheers from Philly. With apologies to Samantha B, who called her election game, this is not a game, the game. We're going to roll through this. I am a system administrator at Penn Medicine. I don't have a security gig per se, but I love playing security games and running with run, running with scissors in the uh, in the metaphorical sense. So games and infosec have had a history together since the 70s but everything has really just been abstract nobody has or at least few games themselves got into the nitty-gritty of what it is to do a penetration test or any kind of coding usually you just got a little menu option about how to probe a system attack a system and you know you just get a little ping when it finishes more recently in the last 10 years or so a lot of games have been on pc involved in actually getting people to code it's not just for programming these are actual video games that you can have fun with hack and slash is a fun one where you can change the behavior of the objects you run into in the world. You can tell the birds that attack you to restore your health instead of taking hit points away. You can change the hit points of a wall. You can make creatures friendly instead of aggressive or make them aggressive toward your enemies. And it's all about getting through this little Zelda-like world in a clever little way by changing behavior through social engineering. Hacknet is more of a classic 90s hacking game, but with more pretty. You can run it through point and click or through typing commands, but it's really just for the story. You're not going to learn anything fun out of it, except for where they pull in people's email files and uh, you get to read through those logs. On the other hand, Else Heartbreak is very complex. The story is very minimal, but you get to run all over the world and change the behavior of the items that are in the game. You can move your hotel room around the city. There is some sort of secret police agency in here. But since this is a Swedish game and Sweden loves hackers, they don't actually do anything scary. They just exist. What I have been into lately is the last game called Exapunks, which comes from the Zactronics studio. They make three different games that are based on assembly programming. On your left-hand side here is the code for the bots that you run around either breaking into systems or even rewriting your own neurons. And it's a fun little game. That's the end of the video games. Now we get into this stuff where for the folks here at Hackenfest, it's kind of like, now I'm going to show you how to lock the barn door when the horses are already out because we've been playing a captured flag game for the last two days. That should be used. I cannot see that anymore. I am a system administrator, as I've said, so my life is spent in the blue team. My red team skills are fairly weak. My, my worst skills are in penetration testing for wireless networks, and for some reason I can't quite get the hang of SQL injection if they have any sort of defense, period. But every time I play a CTF, my goal is to learn two or three things that I have not done before or I haven't done well before and keep improving. The best CTFs have many <laughs> command skills that you need to get used to. And the more extensive and varied the puzzle is, I, I, I think it makes it more open to people with different skills and it's great for team building. I can do a lot of things in Linux. I can do almost nothing in Windows. And so the game that we've been playing with MetaCTF has been awesome because I've got a teammate, Jason, who has been really great in the 
And I also have dysnomia. I'm sorry. I'm looking at Jason's name, but my teammate is Lucas. Lucas San Diego it has been awesome, in particular with the Windows challenges. But when you have people with different skills, that's how you put together a great team, either for a CTF or for an actual threat hunting team. You get to teach one another and cross-pollinate and pick up new skills that way. So many folks that are here at Wild West Hack and Fest, the virtual con, already know how to solve a CTF. Hopefully this will be great in the YouTube. You know, the puzzles usually start simple. If you have to to complete a bunch of puzzles to unlock others, then they should start simply, you know, just like in any other video game. But you can, you know, flags are easy to find. Sometimes you can just rep for them if you're looking for underscores or the phrase CTF. And in others, you get to do a little more work. They really do have practical uses sometimes. You know, penetration testing games and CTFs give you all sorts of, you know, titles and clever clues that you don't get in the real world on engagement. But when you are in a an actual sticky situation you get to you know you uh just use the same skills that you earned in a ctf to solve your problem when you're working on a ctf you'll run into a lot of common puzzle types that involve web testing, picking out improper permissions, uh, escalating privileges, and finding default configurations that are insecure. And these aren't all contrived because everything that has gotten into a CTF isn't just because a problem that's been well known. It's a problem. It's usually a problem that's persistent across multiple operating systems, multiple devices, multiple pieces of software. I have the unfortunate pleasure of working a lot with WordPress in my job, and the number of SQL injection flaws that come up in a plugin or even in base code is unending. Unending. When when you were getting to oh Huskerman, perfect. If you use WordPress, you don't host it yourself. I wish I could do that. It's my job to be to suffer. But you can play CTFs online anytime you want, just like they were any other game on your computer or your tablet, because they are up on servers like MicroCorruption. I told you how much I loved the Zactronics games that you code in assembly. Here you actually get to do disassembly in a very pretty interface over GDB. You pop around the world opening supposedly intelligent locks. Each one that you do unlocks another city and another piece of your travel budget that you get to put, perform a, tra a challenge in. Other things that you can do for web attack practice is open up the OWASP dupe shop. They actually host it on Heroku, or you can download it yourself from GitHub and put it on a server in a VM or on your home network and just attack a very poorly configured website. Pyco CTF is not a, it's time limited competition for uh, any kids that you have in your life that are interested in security. Once the competition is over, it stays up online for anyone to practice with. And every year the Dan's Institute runs the Holiday Hack Challenge, which for the past two years has actually included a virtual conference called PringleCon with talk videos that have been pre-recorded without all these hems and haws. They tend to go through a uh, very ripped from the headlines format in terms of the exploitable conditions that are presented. What's really important for them is that you write an after action report when the conference is wrapping up and they choose the winners based on those reports. And even if you didn't finish all the problems, you can still win t-shirts or prizes based on your reporting 
as opposed to just the puzzles themselves. So here's a quick list of other sites where you can find challenges all the time. The other next step is to actually create a home lab. You can have and not just the OWASP juice shop on a Raspberry Pi, but have an entire network of insecure, whether accidental or deliberate systems that you can attack. The first of these that I found was called Damn Vulnerable Linux. It was a an early penetration testing distro to be you know tested against. It was a good practice. I don't know about Windows ones. I'm sorry that I did not research that for you, but DVL is a lot of fun if you have actually lived through the 90s. Metasploitable is a great resource for more practice and a test bed for the actual Metasploit framework. Seed Security Labs is an academic program that lets you practice against specific flaws and exploits and is particularly good for if you want to do testing against Android or iOS because they have mobile vulnerabilities as well as regular uh, Windows or Linux servers. If uh, you want to get an entire site full of vulnerable machines to play on, Vulnerhub is a great resource for that. So like I said, you can set up a home lab, not just with VMs, but with cheap hardware. Sometimes if you have a weird waste day or uh, electronics recycling day in your neighborhood, you can go and pick up machines from people that are just giving them away because it's old or it's not safe, but it's just old and unsafe enough for you to learn how to penetrate. All you have to do is hope that the people didn't include their hard drives in the machines. Do not test against your neighbor's routers unless they've already given them to you. Raspoon for the Raspberry Pi actually puts an entire virtual network on a single Pi that uh, you can attack from the command line on the machine. Sticky Fingers has not just a Kali build, but also a vulnerable server that you can put onto your home network. I would recommend putting this on a segregated router from your actual home network. Take something that is less than bulletproof and just have it talk to the Wi-Fi maybe with your internet of things light bulbs, as long as you don't actually have, you know, your gaming platform, your TV, and anything that has your family uh, information on it. And then you got to come out in the world, because even though we're all stuck at home, hiding from COVID, talking to each other in Discord, this was meant to be a live conference where we could actually meet face-to-face -face and learn how to hack together. It's been nice having the cat in my lap, but I would have I, I do miss the chance to have met all of you and we'll try again next year, hopefully in better health for everyone. I did say fabulous prizes, and this is a challenge coin that I got from B Sides Philly from a pen test. Others give cash money, hoodies, badges, or attendance at the next year's conference. Security B-Sides runs everywhere, not just in the U.S., but in the world. If you go to bsides.org, see if there's something coming up in your area that has been rescheduled till after the summer. Not much is happening this month, but uh, once we can all go out without masks again, we can uh, hack on hardware and software together. The Whopper Summit was supposed to be next week out in Fort Washington. It's been shifted to... September 18th to 20th. The first one was out in Atlantic City. This is going to be the second iteration of the conference coming up now in September. There will be a CTF. I co-wrote one of the B-side CTFs with the organizer of the conference. I'll be volunteering at that event and hope to see people in September. And of course, the Wild West Hacking Fest. We have about an hour and a half left before the 
MetaCTF competition ends. And like I said, I've got some great teammates. I hope that you are playing and you have good ones too. And we can meet up in September to uh, play again. And then there is the Holy Grail, DEF CON, that takes place every year. They hold the culmination of a long CTF process with regional competitions, online competitions. People have teams of dozens sometimes, you know, hiding up in hotel rooms through a, uh, you know, through a, a cable link to the rest of their teammates that are actually on the floor. And they have cash prizes. If you want to do this for the win of more than Ego Boo, that's a goal to reach for. So we've gone through this. I said it was going to be 45 minutes. It's actually been 25. Sorry for the nerves, but I do recommend continuing with checking this out. That link or YouTube on your home lab is Jeff McDuncan, one of the other presenters here. Alice Goldfuss is one of my InfoSec heroes. She has been working on a few CTFs over a glass of tea on Sunday mornings the past year. And CTF time is a good directory of upcoming events, some online, some live. And those are particularly ones that are based on time limits and prizes.